a great man, outstanding, uh, perhaps the most outstanding man in the world, and, and certainly the most outstanding person I've ever known. It's about a 76-year life, about probably the most remarkable life uh, of our time. I think he was an absolute person. He believed in absolute truth. He believed in God, and he believed that God's revelation, whether it be through the scriptures or through the traditions and teachings of the church, were things that had something to say to everyone, not just the Catholics. To watch him in action, uh, you talk about a pastor, you talk about an evangelist, you talk about uh, a man of warmth and sincerity and, and vigor and just an all-embracing uh, giant of a man. Who has been seen and heard by more people than any individual in the history of the earth. Pope John Paul practiced what he preached. He was a man of faith, he was a man of love. He was prepared to call people out of their comfort zones. He was prepared to challenge people to live up to their capacity, whether it be especially young people, uh, and also the Poles suffering under communism. Uh, people were prepared to follow him. He's one of the most remarkable popes in Catholic history. Blessed John Paul II reigned as Pope of the Catholic Church from 1978 until his death in 2005. In Wadowice, Poland, Blessed John Paul II, originally Karol Josef Watia, was born on May 18, 1920, to Amelia and Karol Watia Sr. As a boy, Karol was athletic, often playing soccer and multiple other sports. At a young age, his mother encouraged him to join the priesthood. After the death of his father, he started thinking more seriously about it, and in October 1942, he began courses in the clandestine underground seminary run by the Archbishop of Krakow. Upon finishing his studies at the seminary in Krakow, Watia was ordained a priest on All Saints Day, November 1st, 1946. He returned to Poland in the summer of 1948 with his first pastoral assignment in the village of Nedziewicz. He arrived at Nedziewicz where his first action was to kneel and kiss the ground. This gesture, which he adapted from the French Saint John Mary Vianney, would become a trademark action during his papacy. After 12 years of priesthood, Carol was appointed by Pope Pius XII as an auxiliary bishop. At age 38, he was the youngest bishop in Poland. During his years as bishop, he was able to take part in the Second Vatican Council, where he made great contributions and was highly influential. A short seven years after being appointed as bishop, Pope Paul VI announced Karol Watia's promotion into the College of Cardinals on June 26, 1967. After the passing of Pope Paul VI, a conclave was called and Pope John Paul I was elected. John Paul I died after only 33 days and a conclave was called again to elect a new pope. After the eighth ballot on the second day, Karol Watia was elected as pope and chose the name John Paul II in honor of his immediate predecessor. Pope John Paul II became the 264th Pope and the first non-Italian Pope in 455 years. During his 26-year papacy, he became one of the most influential leaders in history, at the same time being loved by all, regardless of religion, race, or background. He visited 129 countries, traveling 1.1 million kilometers, to meet with people all around the world. He visited India for the first time in 1986 to attend the International Eucharistic Congress held in Bombay and a second time in November of 1999 for the post-synodal apostolic exhortation Ecclesia in Asia held in New Delhi. During his visit in 1986, John Paul II ordained Sister Alfonso's beatification. Sister Alfonso would become the first Indian and Sarah Malabar saint. During his papacy, the Pope put a great emphasis on the youth. By establishing World Youth Day, 
He was able to gather millions of Catholic youth from all around the world for the first time in history. Along with this, he was able to significantly improve the Catholic Church's relations with other religions, including Judaism, Islam, and other Christian denominations. In addition, he found time to write 13 encyclicals, 13 apostolic exhortations, 11 apostolic constitutions, and 42 apostolic letters. John Paul II has been credited with being instrumental in bringing down communism in Central and Eastern Europe by being the spiritual inspiration behind its downfall and a catalyst for a peaceful revolution in Poland. On May 13, 1981, as John Paul II entered St. Peter's Square to address an audience, he was shot and critically wounded by a fascist Turkish gunman, Mehmet Ali Agka. After losing three quarters of his blood and five hours of surgery, Pope John Paul II made an astounding recovery, which he attributed to Our Lady of Fatima. Agka was caught and sentenced to life imprisonment. Two years later, the Holy Father visited him in prison. John Paul II said, What we talked about will have to remain a secret between him and me. I spoke to him as a brother, whom I have pardoned and who has my complete trust. After only 25 years on the papal throne, two assassination attempts, and a number of cancer scares, John Paul's physical health declined. In 2001, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Despite difficulty speaking, trouble hearing, and severe osteoarthrosis, he continued to tour the world, although rarely walking in public. Pope John Paul II has been a blessing for the Sierra Malabar Church as well. He elected the first Sierra Malabar Bishop into the College of Cardinals, Marvarki Vidyatil. Furthermore, he established the St. Thomas Sierra Malabar Diocese of Chicago on March 13, 2001. The Blessed John Paul II Sierra Malabar Mission in Garfield, New Jersey, is the second church in the United States to take upon his name. On March 31, 2005, John Paul II developed septic shock and was nearing death. It was decided to keep him at his private residence rather than bringing him to the hospital. Thousands upon thousands gathered outside St. Peter's Square praying for the Holy Father. Then, on April 2, 2005, John Paul II said his last words, Let me depart to the house of the Father, and died near after. Upon hearing the news, an estimated four million people gathered for his funeral, including four kings, five queens, about 70 presidents and prime ministers, and 14 other religious leaders. Soon after his death, his successor, Pope Benedict, began the process for the beatification of John Paul II, bypassing the usual five-year grace period. On May 1, 2011, John Paul II was beatified by Pope Benedict, after which his tomb was sealed in St. Peter's, under the altar of St. Sebastian. Few men have left a more positive imprint on the world than Blessed John Paul II. He brought hope to all corners of the world, to people of all faiths and backgrounds. He is a man that will never be forgotten.